Hello friends, welcome back to Dig In with Raven, where we are making our way through archaeology by eating it. Today we are going back in time to ancient Egypt again to do something mostly because I spent way too much money on a prop for the very first Ancient Eats video and I don't want it to go to waste. If you guys saw the very first Ancient Eats episode where I made the tiger nut balls, you will know that the tiger nut balls did not include any tiger nuts, which is very strange. But luckily I have found a really cool, not a recipe, but a set of vignettes that show ancient Egyptians making these sort of offering loaves by using tiger nuts. So finally we get to use these in an actual ancient Egyptian recipe. Very, very exciting. Of course, it's not really a recipe. It's more of an interpretation, but you know, that's what archaeology is all about, huh? So the thing that we're making today, it doesn't really have like a proper title. People have called it like an offering lobe. Um, in the name on the vignettes that we're going to be using, it's called washat. So some people online call it tiger nut cones, a lot of things. We're just making things with tiger nuts that the Egyptians might have eaten. So it's going to be exciting. So as I said, we're not using a recipe, we're actually using a set of vignettes that were found in an 18th dynasty tomb of a guy named Rekmire or Rekmira. And this can kind of act as the closest thing that we have to a proper written down ancient Egyptian recipe. The vignettes on this tomb depict all the steps that go into making these very triangular shaped tiger nut loaves that are used for offerings. There were some researchers who published their interpretations of these vignettes in the 1980s, and I've linked to that in my description for the source. So I'm just gonna be kind of going off of that and then also from the vignettes to try and figure out what exactly these tiger nut loaves were all about. Now, of course, because these are vignettes and they're you know very artistic, they don't show the entire process, but they do show every major step. So based off of these images, as well as the little bits of text that accompany it, we can start to piece together what these tiger nut cones were made out of, how they were made, and what they looked like. The vignettes show the pounding of the tiger nuts, adding some sort of liquid, either water or a type of fat, possibly adding some other forms of flour, forming them into loaves and baking them. There are little messages next to each segment that describe what's happening, so that's super helpful. Now, I've seen a few recreation attempts of these tiger nut loaves, and I'm gonna be honest, some of them do confuse me a little bit. The images on Rekmire's tomb show these loaves to be triangular in shape, and people have interpreted that to be pyramidal in shape and it kind of makes sense if you're thinking about drawing a 3d object but that's kind of not how ancient egyptian art works like sure they could have been conical or pyramidal but if you know ancient egyptian art it's very oriented so you can kind of see things flat and then it kind of gets put up on a wall so if it's a flat thing you don't just show the side of it like that you kind of flip it up like that so you can see what it really is. They orient it in order for us to get the full view. That's the whole point of when they have bodies, right? You have your feet like this sideways, but your body is this way, but your head is this way. And it just, it's not a natural way to stand, but that's how you get to see the whole thing. So in my mind, these cones might not be cones. They might not be an actual 3D cone or pyramid in shape. They're, they might just be a flat rectangle that they put up like that to be like, look, this is what it looks like. Different interpretations, different schools of thought. That means we're gonna do two different tests. We're gonna make the more pyramidal shape that people have been putting on the internet. And then we're gonna make a more like flat triangular pancake type thing that I was reading about in the interpretation in the article that for me, makes a little bit more sense. But first we have to make our tiger nuts into not tiger nuts anymore, but into tiger nut flour. I'm not gonna pound the tiger nuts because I have no time for that. I'm gonna use my very modern food processor. Yes. And there's no plug here. I don't have enough extension cords. So I'm just gonna go over here and pound this out. And while I work on this, enjoy this lovely voiceover of me talking to you about 
tiger nuts. Tiger nuts were very popular and common along the Nile Valley. These tubers could have even been harvested by hunter-gatherers before people started to settle down and begin farming. We found examples of tiger nuts in tombs and they were apparently very well liked and used extensively in ancient Egyptian diets. Oh boy, okay, so... There was some mad heat coming off of my food processor. Very concerning. It looks like I even started to like cook some of the tiger nut stuff into, oh no. These tiger nuts are tough, man. But I will say they taste better when they're ground up. Oh man, mm. as ground up as it can be. You know what, we're just gonna go with it. Cause, ah, all right. Never a dull moment on Raven's cooking show. This is why I don't have a cooking show. So now that we have our sort of mealy tiger nut meal, we are going to add some liquid to it. Now in the vignettes, there's an unidentified liquid substance that has been added, and it could be either some sort of oil or fat, or it could be water. And I'm just gonna keep it a little light and breezy because we gotta fry these in oil later. So we're gonna add water. One cup of tiger nuts. So I realized that if you go to like some health food store, cause this is one of the new big kick health food things, um, you can buy tiger nut flour that's already been ground up. And to that, I, I highly recommend it cause it's hot. Like there's some mad heat. It's like cooking the tiger nuts already. Wow. All right, so we have one cup here and then we're gonna do three quarters of a cup of water. Three quarters of a cup of water. Now the fun part, the mixing. Okay, well that didn't work out. <laughs> okay, well that didn't work out so well. I've made like tiger nut muesli. <laughs> it's not bad. Clearly <laughs> if you do it fresh, it doesn't work so well. <laughs> Don't know what to do. <laughs> All right, let's try something here. Okay, I have an idea. We're gonna soak the bits that didn't get blended up in this water here. Aha, uh -huh, making it work. Then putting it back in the food processor because then if they're soaked up, they will be a little bit easier to handle. Actually, this looks a lot better this is like some good tiger nut meal. This is legit a meal. All right, friends, there is only so much grinding and sifting I can do with the tools that I have. So we're just gonna go with it. That's the glory of experimental archeology span and just being too cheap to buy tiger nut flour. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and start making number two, which is the one that I think is more accurate anyway. So I guess it's all working out. <laughs> uh, in this number two version, it's not a pyramid type thing. It's an actual like pancake almost like it's if in my mind that's what an offering loaf looks like like an actual loaf not a pyramid it does follow essentially what we're doing anyways with tiger nut meal and some sort of liquid so let's do that but we're going to be very careful with it i'm going to do a little bit at a time to mix it in this is much better oh yes this is what it's supposed to look like that looks like a dough that feels like Oh, yes. Look at that. It's like, it literally is like a Play-Doh. That works so much better. Okay. Oh, and it tastes good too. In Rekmire's tomb, there are scenes of people cooking dates and also beekeeping, but we're not gonna put them inside as in some people have interpreted as putting bits of date inside these py the pyramid ones, but we're gonna get back to that later. Don't worry. There's another scene where you there is some sort of white substance being added to the tiger nut dough. Unfortunately, it is damaged, so we're not 100% sure what it says. Some people have interpreted it as letting it like stay to the side and like be leavened for a bit, even though it's an unleavened dough. But then others um, have ideas of, for example, putting in some sort of wheat or barley flour into it, which would make sense in my mind if you're gonna cook it 
on a wok, which is what they did with some oil in it, to make it more like a loaf, like a bready type loaf cake thing. So we're gonna add some flour. And the people that investigated this whole thing and when they wrote the article, they found that adding a little bit of flour did actually help with making sure that the loaf didn't crack or kind of come apart when it was being cooked. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I might add just under equal parts of flour and tiger nut meal. So I'm gonna say like more tiger nut meal than flour, that makes sense. But also, you know, when they said that they were talking about leavening it and like kind of leaving it to rest, even doughs that aren't yeasty or need to rise will actually benefit from leaving it to rest for a bit. It helps it become a little bit more digestible. Fun fact for you. But we do know that the loaves were probably not leavened in Rekhmerel's bakery because there are no bread molds that have been depicted. And if they use bread molds, you best know that the ancient Egyptians would have depicted them. So that means these are just kind of free-formed dough ball things that were turned into triangles and cooked. That looks like a dough to me, actually. Look at that. Oh, wow. I have to get my hands in there now. That is a dough. That is dough right there. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it worked. Now we have to take the dough and turn it into little triangles. Now I'm just gonna flatten it. There we go, look a triangle. Ha, okay, you know what? I'm not even gonna make the first round because these look super cute and super fun and I'm sure, I know they would have been bigger but I'm trying to make as many as possible. I think these are really cool and I'm just gonna, you know what? I'm gonna stick to my gut and I'm gonna say, I think that this is a more accurate display of like a an offering loaf but then again you know that's just my bias maybe it's just us putting our own little egyptomania bias on how things in egypt were shaped also i am just exhausted <laughs> from just making these so i don't think uh i'll be have the energy to actually do the other ones so now we have our offering loaf triangles, which are kind of cute. We now have to cook them. And in the vignettes from Rek Mira, they show it being fried in a frying pan or some sort of wok. So I'm gonna go fry it in some oil, see what happens. And it's really cool because in the vignettes of Rek Mira, after they've been cooked, some of them show that they're like yellow on the inside, but then have like red bits on the outside, I guess, because they're a bit more charred or something. So that's pretty cool. Of course, we'll never be 100% sure but that's the magic of archeology. span And while I'm over at the stove, I'm also gonna be cooking this like date syrup or something. There's an interpretation where the dates, because they're being cooked and there's a depiction of honey and bee made beekeeping that they might've done like a, a fun, like pureed date syrup to put over top of these loaves. And that to me just sounds like delicious. Maybe that's why I'm biased towards the recipe looking like this, because I'm Canadian and I love pancakes with maple syrup. I'm gonna try it that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up some dates, boil them up in some honey, and then puree them to make some sort of mushy syrup to put on top of these. made them they look kind of cute and it was really cool because as i said in the vignette when they said that some of the outer edges were much like darker red and yellow in the center well i did it yeah so let's plate them up trying to make them look appetizing i guess and also in regards to the dates and the honey what i did was i just cut up a few dates put them in the pot with some water and kind of stewed them around a bit and they got kind of mushy. And you can see they kind of make like a nice little syrup and I added some honey inside to make it a little bit more goopy. I know someone who has not had breakfast yet, so I'm gonna call him in right now to taste it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> hey. Hi. What have you made for us today? I made these ancient Egyptian tiger nut offering loaves. Exciting. Yes, I was supposed to have two options 
but the first option didn't work. Okay. So this is um, not the typical one that people have made in previous reconstructions. This is one that kind of makes sense to me and a few other scholars that wrote like this could be a thing. They should also be bigger. It's like an ancient Egyptian pancake. Oh, I love pancakes. Yeah. So I made some syrup too. It's dates and honey. So set the scene for me. So ancient Egypt. Banks of the Nile, these tubers, these tiger nuts are growing everywhere. You mix it up with some stuff, you make a loaf, it's like a snack. It's really nice. Was it good? I like it a lot. I'm ex I mean, oh my gosh, okay. I like the the honey date syrup is really nice. Yeah. And the, the I tiger make nut mine, pancake. I wanna make mine like, like, like food styled, like, oh, it looks like a turd on top, never mind. Mmm. Yeah, right? Oh my god. Wow. Wow. They're a little mealy. Mm-hmm. But, but in a good way. Mm. And the, the sweetness of the syrup, which mm -hmm. by itself is really good, mm -hmm. accentuates them. They're fluffy. They're, they're fluffier fluffy, than I firm. thought. Fluffy but, but firm. But they're firm. Yeah. I don't feel heavy. Oh. Oh my gosh. I thought this was going to be like the worst episode ever because oh. nothing was happening. The kitchen is mess. You I couldn't so, do it. I could tell you seem so like nervous. Mm -hmm. But this is a winner. It's good. They're also like very filling. Mm -hmm. No. Mm. I can imagine this yeah. being like a staple part of breakfast. It's a good breakfast. Yeah. With that tea on the side. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what would be good maybe? Oat milk. Oat milk. You want to try some oat milk with this? Yeah. Mmm. Wow. That was super good. This is like a great breakfast. Mm -hmm. And they're faster to cook than... You know what they remind, remind me of? Crumpets. I will say that they kind of look like like chicken nuggets. They do. Yeah. <laughs> you can see them. They look like chicken nuggets. I imagine it as well like with jam or butter on top would be good. You know what I'm curious about? Maple syrup. But I'm Canadian, so I just put maple syrup on everything. True. So try it. I'm gonna try it. It's good. It's good. But it's not as good as, the, as, good as the date. I never say that. Usually maple syrup wins everything. That's right. <gasps> oh no. I'm imagining like like a high tea. You have these. And you yeah. Put I, look, I got I even got my pinky up. Yeah. That's how I feel when I'm eating it. You can wow. make them again. Yeah. Anytime. But I'm like full already. Not me. I'm no? gonna eat more. Oh, I had breakfast. You didn't. I didn't. I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. I feel like this would be something. You know when you need your like 10:30 snack. Elevenses. Your elevenses. This is great. You can like wrap them up in some beeswax wrap. A plus. A plus. That was really yummy. Yeah. You want to clean my kitchen? No, I gotta go to work. Oh, okay. Well, thanks so much for uh, watching the the struggle that was this video, you guys. If you liked that video, go ahead and smash that like button down below. I've also left in the description pretty much how I made that date so because it was just an eyeball, so if anyone needs to know how to do it, it's there. It's also on my website, link to that in the description. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any other fun, possibly disastrous videos. And if you like the channel and you just wanna keep supporting this mess that is the cooking and a fun archaeology madness going over to patreon and become a patron it really does help to support just the production of these videos and you can do that the link is in my description down below you will get early access to all of my videos and you will get some free things like stickers or mugs whatever you feel and you will also get your name on the screen right here here are all of my socials and as always stay dirty my friends